Sometimes when we're editing a photograph, we, we like to make a quick change to the tonality of it. And this is what the new Tone Corrections plugin allows us to do. We can quickly change the exposure by a preset value, or we can target the shadows or the highlights by effectively burning or dodging them. And again, we can do that by choosing one of the preset values. So the new Tones Correction Photoshop plugin is it's a very small, lightweight plugin. It's extremely easy to use and probably doesn't really require any tuition as to how to use it. But basically what we've got, we've got two drop down menus, one called Dodge and one called Burn. Under the Dodge, we've got three sets of presets where we can target in this case the shadows or the highlights. So this would basically lighten the shadows and we've got a value of one, two or three. Or we could lighten the highlights. These are very subtle changes and you're gonna to have to really look hard at the image to see what the actual changes have done. But they are there and they're not really dramatic changes. And then we've got the same effect on the opposite side. If we want to burn or darken either the shadows or highlights, again, we've got three presets for each. Underneath that, we've got exposure settings where we can increase the exposure. Now, unlike the shadows or the highlights for the dodge and burn, this is a global change where we can increase the exposure across the full tonal range of the image by either a quarter, half, three quarters, or a full stop. We can go the opposite way. We can decrease the exposure, again, by the same values. Beneath that, we've got the ability to change or select whether we want the above presets to be attached with a black mask or a white mask. Some people prefer to paint in the effect in which case you would select the black mask, whereas some people may want to paint away the effect. And in that situation, you'd actually choose the white mask. To the right hand side of the white mask, we've got this refresh icon and what that does, it repopulates the drop down options. So we can use the same setting more than once and we'll see that in a moment. And then finally, we've got this disable mask icon which allows us to quickly disable the layer mask so we can see the effect that the presets have made without having to display it through the actual mask. So the dodge and the burn options these are targeting the shadows and the highlights and you'll notice if we look at this step wedge that the shadows are targeting the lower end of the scale to around zone three and a half as we can see that here whereas on the other end of the scale the highlights have been targeted to around nine to nine and a half if we quickly move over to a different image and this is an image that contains various layers the way that i would use the panel is i'd first look at the image to try and establish what i want to achieve and I think for this particular photograph, I want to bring in more light through the window or emphasize the light coming in through the window a little bit more. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the global exposure for this. I always like to paint in the effect. So I'm going to make sure that I've got the black mask chosen. And I'm going to probably go for three quarters of a stop. So I'm just going to choose that. We can't see the effect at the moment because it's been hidden by this black mask. But what we can do is we can disable that black mask very easily. And we can see what that three quarters of a stop has done. And I think that's probably not far off where I want it to be. So I'm just going to re-enable that black mask. And now with a white paintbrush, probably a slightly larger brush, I'm just going to gently increase that. And we can see where I've painted on the mask. I'm just going to disable that. Yeah, I think that looks fairly good. Now I'm just going to probably increase it on the rear wall as well. 
I like to bring in a little bit more brightness into the mirror. So I think for that one I'm going to choose a plus one stop. And again I'm just going to disable the mask to see if that's roughly in the right area that I want it to be. And I think that's that's fairly good. So I'm just going to lower the size of the brush this time. And I'm just going to paint in that effect. So we've got before and after. So using the panel is extremely easy to use. What we're doing is targeting certain areas through the use of layer masking. Now coming back to the refresh button, I did mention that this repopulates the panel. So let's say for example I'm going to burn the shadows and I'm going to choose the strongest preset. And again it's behind a black mask. Well this time I'm just going to undo that and I'm going to choose a white mask so we can see the effect straight away. But you'll notice that I've already used the Shadow 3s once so it's not allowing me to reselect it. And this is where the refresh icon in, comes into play. So by selecting that it more or less repopulates this box. So now we can come back in and choose that burn shadows three. So just to recap on that, let's say we go to dodge and we're going to dodge the highlights using the number three preset. But let's say that we want to reapply that again. Because we've already used it the once, we can't reselect it a second time. So we refresh the panel and then that now allows us to come back and apply that once again. So that's what the refresh icon does. And then by selecting this icon we've already seen it will actually disable or enable that layer mask. So that's just a quick rundown on the Tone Corrections Photoshop plugin. There's not much else I can explain about it. It is, it is extremely easy to use and self-explanatory. Just remember that we're targeting certain areas through the use of layer masking. Whether that be selective targeting the shadows or highlights using the dodge or burn presets. Or whether we're targeting the overall exposure of the full tonal range within the image. But again, we're using this selectively by the use of layer masks where we're either choosing to paint in or out the overall effect. So if you like the plugin, it's now available on the website and I'll leave a link in the description below. It's compatible with Photoshop 23.3 and newer. So until next time, thank you for watching and as usual, bye for now.